last week we spoke about the differential and this week we're going to take it a step further because in ACC we only have the preload available but to see actual effects we also need the ramp angles and perhaps even more settings we're changing the game in Audible Ballista 2 we have much more flexibility so this is our gain of choice today um I just think we just go Today we are going to use Automobilista and the GD1 car CLK GDR because here we have a couple nice options and we already used it in the last video. Now, if you only know ACC, you only know the preload value and that is basically the friction or the pressure um, put onto the clutch plates at all times in the differential and that's the only thing we can really adjust. ACC also has these ramp angles, but they are locked per car and we cannot really adjust them but they are having the biggest impact on the differential as a whole especially in the braking and turning in scenario and in the acceleration scenario to understand what all these parts do in the differ uh, differential i really urge you to go over to um, engineering explained who is having a bunch of really good videos on how differentials work and I will link them in the description as well. What we're going to do then today is do three types of differential. So to say we're going to drive with an entirely open differential or as open as we can set it up in the car. We're going to lock it. So we want to lock it as much as we can with the settings we have available. And then we're going to use one that is more of an ideal trying to get the best of both worlds. So let's start with the open differential. To make the differential as open as possible, we are going to use a preload of zero, meaning there is no pressure exerted onto the clutch plates, uh, which means the tires can spin independently. If uh, the low settings, we're also going to use on the clutches that are inside the differential, which again reduces the possible friction we have between uh, the clutch plates and the housing of the differential. It doesn't matter really. Just look. At the other video we are just trying to make it as open as possible and additionally we have ramp angles for different driving situations the power ramp controlling how much locking effect we get under acceleration and the higher the ramp angle the less of a locking effect we're going to have with 90 degree being like entirely impossible to get any effect but we can't put it at 90 so it's going to be 89 which is small enough to not get any uh, or high enough to not get any locking effect and the same we're going to do for the coast ramp angle which we're also setting to the highest value to not get any locking effect in that situation so with this setting we should have a pretty open differential and now we're going to look at how this affects the car behavior in the corners okay i've warmed up the car so the tires have temperature and we can actually drive because uh, if we just leave the pits on the cold tires, it's really difficult to show the actual effects because there are more things that affect how the car behaves. So now what I want you to look at for the next couple laps that I'm going to do is check out for what you hear, because that's really important, especially on corner exit, you will be able to hear when the engine revs up without the car actually accelerating, which will indicate that some tire is spinning up that perhaps shouldn't. And there are really only two scenarios where you will get the the, the rest of the engine to rise uh, without the car accelerating. And one is if the inside tire spins up or the outside tire spins up. If the outside tire spins up, you are usually drifting. If the inside tire spins up, you're producing smoke without losing um, the rear end of the car the other thing is we are looking at the turn in situation how agile the car is there how good it responds to any steering input um i think in the tooltip it was uh, called maneuverability which just a perfectly fine term as well and then we have the mid corner situation and i think i'm just going to and that way you can already see it perhaps take a look at the rear view mirror which is going to tell you which tire is not having grip. You can already see it there. There's a bit of smoke coming from the inside wheel in that situation. And we show the short track so we get a lot of laps in. See, the car is very agile here on turn and I don't have to use a lot of steering. And it's always going to convert whatever steering I do so the rear end feels quite alive on turn end. 
but you can also tell when I put the power down now, the RPMs go up, and then at the end of the yeah, kind of acceleration or when the car is straightened, the RPMs come down again, indicating that the tire that was previously spinning is having grip again. So with the open differential as we have it now, or as open as it can be, we have a pretty agile on turn entry and I have to actually be careful to not do too much trail braking and not force the car too deep into the turn because the rear end really is lively now. And the front end of the car is pretty strong. And on acceleration, I can just floor it. There's pretty much no possibility for me to lose the rear end on corner exit, even if I'm pretty blunt on throttle. I'll show it to you here again. Once the slide is over, just floor it. And 700 horsepower, I have no problem to stay in charge. But of course, also you can already see in the tire app down there that the rear right tire, even though we are only doing right corners, is the one being most used because it's constantly losing grip on corner exit. And I'm, of course, I'm overdoing it here. But you can see the, the rear tire is wearing, wearing pretty fast. It has a lot of temperature. And already now I can feel the impact of the inside tire there wearing much faster than the rest of the other tires. And you can, you can almost see the tire wear increasing there. So the open differential is a bit of an issue for corner exits in particular depending on the car also the corner entry is quite difficult it didn't really push there but the rear end is so willing now to rotate into the turn that it can cause some issues now let's make a kind of 180 degree turn and switch to the locked differential for the lock differential we are going to pretty much do put everything exactly on the opposite of the the slider uh, the preload is going to be the maximum the game allows, which in this case is 500 Newton meters, which is going to be the force exerted onto the clutch place by default in all scenarios. And as long as that force isn't overcome by anything else, the differential remain locked. Then we are also using the most amount of clutch plates, which increases the, the overall friction in the differential as well. And then we are setting the ramp angles to pretty aggressive values. So any additional forces coming into the differential from either accelerating or uh, torque differentials um, starting under braking and turn in, they are going to lock the differential even more. Um, so I think we warm up the tires again and we'll give you a go or I'll show you how the differential, the car now behaves with a differential that is locked in all driving situations around this track. So tires are warmed up and we are ready to go. Now I wanted basically to do the same thing. Listen to the engine and compare to how the car behaves. So we again looking at the situations on corner entry where the car should now be much more stable, less willing to convert all the steering inputs that I'm doing to the car. So we'll probably see the car less responsive, not really will willing to go for the turn and only once we reduce the speed the car is actually going to steer and follow the front tires. The other thing is now that the rear differential is locked, as soon as we uh, yeah, use the accelerator, the forces will go straight to the outside wheel and that can pose a bit of a challenge. So now I'm not expecting us to have an easy life on exit here and we probably have to be much more careful with the throttle because the rear outside tire is now going to be one of the limiting factors on corner exit. However, if we get it right, we should have much better, faster exits and in the end, faster lap times unless the lock differential is going to pose major challenges on corner entry and mid turn. So I think I'll just uh, go. You can already see here that I'm dancing the bit the car now on exit because it's much more loose now that the outside tire is going to be the limiting factor. In fast turns with a downforce, we usually don't have any issue with the lock differential. But as soon as we come for the slower turns, 
the car is more reluctant to turn and we need to take a bit more care or time to get the turn in. It doesn't really respond to the steering as aggressively, but on the other hand, you can see that it's responding much more to throttle inputs and even small ones will always lead the car to rotate further. So watch it. Tiny bit on the throttle, the rear immediately steps out. So drift cars will typically have a, a locked rear axle, which makes it very easy to get the rear to step out. And here we have to play with the car a little to not lose the rear end and be much more careful on the throttle here. Can even do the short shift. Always enough power available, can slide the car around a bit. But on the other hand, you can see in the Delta now, the forces the ex that we are asking from the engine are actually converted into speed. But now that the rear axle is locked, whenever we kind of stress the limits of the rear grip, like we just did there clipping the curb, we have the problem that the outside tire is going to lose grip because it's not allowed to, to adapt really. I'm not sure if I have a um, damage on here. Uh, I don't think I have, so we can just go on and maybe try one clean lap at least, but you can tell it's much more difficult now with such a powerful car. Immediately the rear steps out, we get nice rotation on exit. But if we floor the throttle, our life is going to be very difficult. Much more oversteer we need to deal with, except on entry, it really doesn't want to go. And then we touch the throttle and the rear immediately comes around, which is pretty much the opposite of what we had earlier. And also not really something you want in the race car because you wanted to kind of behave more similar in all driving situations that makes it more predictable. And that in the end is why we are having the limited slip differentials where we can control separately what the car is doing on corner entries and what the car is doing on corner exits. Because here we just have, yeah, kind of we have the advantage of good acceleration from the turn if we are careful enough with the throttle and no energy, so to say, is wasted, like in the open differential, but it is a lot more sensitive to drive and it's really reluctant to do anything into the turn and it's very tricky on corner exit, giving us a hard time really pushing the car around here. So next step, I guess, we are going to do a run in the limited slip differential. So now we are going to use something that is kind of in between. We're going to use some preload, so we'll always have some locking effect in the differential. We're going to use a lower amount, but still not the lowest amount of clutch plates. Again, increasing the minimal amount of friction we are going to have in the differential. And we are going to use a power ramp that is definitely more on the locking side of things. And we're going to use a coast ramp that is more on the open differential side of things, right? So a higher power ramp angle means more locking effect. A lower ramp angle means less locking effect. So we get some of the freedom we want from the open differential on corner entry, even though not as much as the fully open differential. And we want some locking effect on corner exit, even though not as aggressive of a locking effect we just had with a fully locked differential. So let's see how this behaves. I'll again warm up the tires a little and then we should be able to see a few differences. Okay, tires are warmed up a little bit so we can go for a comparison run. The previous lap times were 42.1 or something. And now what we're going to do is have a look at, again, corner entry behavior of the car, corner exit behavior of the car. And what we have is a differential that is going to be largely locked on corner exit and only occasionally allowing some of the energy kind of escaping through the inside wheel which should make the car more stable as the outside tire is not overwhelmed too much but at the same time we want the car to be nimble into the corners and responsive so we are trying to find the in-between of well the situations we had before 
where with the open differential we had no traction on exit lost all the energy to kind of smoke um, but on entry it was a bit too sensitive at times then with a lock differential we had the problem that the car was well also very sensitive on corner exit but at least it had traction if we were able to manage the throttle while on corner entry it was really reluctant to turn and there is obviously somewhere in between where we want to be we want the car to be nimble want to turn in without rotating too much and then on exit we wanted to have traction without overwhelming the driver and the outside rear tire so that it remains to have grip behave predictably and well in the end we we need to finish race distances and that the differential should help massively so let's look into these driving situations now again you will already see with the throttle here I can play a little without the rear end immediately stepping out. It will still do that if I overcook it, right? But it's not going to do this with the tiniest of throttle input. Into the turn, we get good placement of the car and through the entire corner. There was no need to, to counter steer there, which we had earlier when we went into the power. Here, it's responding to my steering input, not too aggressively, not too sharply, but it's definitely also not going straight. Can touch the curb here, no issue. Was an issue before with the lock differential and now onto the throttle. Nice smooth slide. You can hear a bit the inside tire just about losing grip there, which is good because it stabilized the car and exit. And just the first lap here while talking, not really focusing a lot doing a well sub 42 time and of course spending more time with this getting more on top of the car we could go even faster now that the car behaves better in all driving situations it's much more comfortable immediately to push the car around here and go for the turns because now i know there's going to be less surprises and there's another three tenths shaved up. I'll try one more lab, but perhaps the I think we have the soft flick on. That might already be over its peak here, or there's still green delta left. Only trouble here is into this corner, really from locking the rear tires and the braking. But not intimidated at all on corner exits. If I use too much power, the inside tire is always kind of spinning up a little more and preventing the outside tire from losing grip. You can see it here. It's sometimes still a bit too open, but at least it's confidence inspiring. We don't have to worry about losing the rear end. And another difference you can see is in the tire temperatures compared to the open differential. We now have the outside rear tire being the warmest and the inside rear tire being a little colder. Whereas with the open differential, it was actually the other way around because the inside tire was constantly spinning up. I hope these examples were able to show you a bit how the differential works and maybe you feel better now when you're experimenting with these setup options and especially with the differential you can have huge impact on how comfortable you feel in the car by just making it more predictable and more tolerant in different driving situations so i'd say if that was helpful for you hit the like button maybe subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future and then i thank you for watching and we'll see you very soon